Okay, okay. 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 Okay, so sure, sure, sure. Very warm good morning to all the participants. Very 
A very warm good morning to all the participants. Uh, we shall start the session in another five minutes. Good morning, sir. We have uh, to all the participants. We have our guest arrived today. Good morning, sir, Dr. Avinash, sir. Very good morning, sir. Very good morning. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we'll start uh, in another two minutes, sir, please. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Two minutes, sir, please. Once again, uh, a very warm good morning to all the participants. Uh, let me start this day with a day and the session with a quote. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, welcome the gathering. For that, uh, I request uh, Dr. Renaga, Head Department of Computer Science of our institution, to deliver the welcome address and welcome the gathering. Ma'am, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning to all. I take the privilege to welcome our, our chief guest, Dr. Avinash Panwa, Associate Professor in Department of Computer Science and Director Computer Center at Mohanlal Sudhita University, Pudekbur, and all the participants for the participants from the other colleges, staffs, and students are welcome all for the webinar on innovative digital teaching methodology. And uh, he has completed the PhD in Tech Computer Science and MCA. And he has 18 plus years of work experience. First, he was working as an associate in the Department of Computer Science and Director, Mohanlal Sudhita University, Udipo, from uh, June 2018 to till now. He worked as a registrar at the Sri Patmavat Singhahaina University, uh, 17 to 2018. And he worked as an assistant professor, Department of Computer Science, Sri Patmavat Singhahaina University, from February 2009 to 2017. And he worked as a faculty and training and placement officer in Mohanlal Sugaida University, August 2005 to January 2009. And worked as an HOD Computer Science Aitoria College of Education, Sansasta, from March 2005 to July 2005. Uh, he worked as an IT in charge and faculty computer science in Bhopal Nobles, PG College, Udaipur, from July 2001 to February 2005. He has research super uh, supervisors for 14 candidates. He has publications uh, in various nations, national, international level journals, and he contributed to the book as well. 
He has attended various national and international conference, workshops, seminars, and training. And he has received many awards and achievements during his academic studies and career. So I am taking this opportunity. Uh, I hope I and I wish that webinar will be very useful to you and for me to welcome all once again. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, sir. And welcome once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for welcoming the gathering. Uh, now I uh, request uh, Dr. Avinash sir to take up the dais and uh, deliver his keynote address on innovations in the digital teaching methodology. Uh, I hope uh, the lecture session would be useful for all the faculties who are joined here as well as the students who are uh, joined in the session because you, you all are a part and parcel of the online teaching uh, sessions which is going on right now happening as we speak in all the education institutions. So please uh, take important steps and uh, notes in, from the session. And uh, that's it. Thank you, sir. The dais is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Shinar, sir. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. And it uh, indeed is a pleasure to be interacting uh, with the people from the other part of the country. Uh, I'm way in the West and I'm interacting with you uh, in core south of the country. So it's indeed a pleasure to be joining you. Uh, I have very fond memories of last year. I was visiting uh, Uti and Wellington and all that. So it was very nostalgic when I received a call from you. So uh, thank you. Uh, coming on to the topic, like I've been asked to talk on uh, innovative digital teaching methodology. Before I start with that, we need to understand why we are discussing this. We have been talking about uh, the new normal. The pandemic has uh, given us an opportunity to stop and look back and introspect at what we have been doing. The education system, if you look at it, uh, it has been the same for almost 20, 25 years. This pandemic has given me the time that I'm at my home uh, observing how my child is learning. And now I realize that things have not changed much. Um, even 50% of the curriculum, what we used to study in our 10th class, the same is being taught now. So over 20, 25 years, nothing much has changed. And now this has been the time wherein the new education policy has been launched. So if we go ahead with the traditional way of teaching, I think we will not be able to do justice to the new education policy that has been launched very recently. Secondly, the world is changing, the challenges are changing, the scenarios are changing. And if we don't change our way of learning, we'll be left behind. Today, we are uh, standing somewhere in the global ranking because of our intellectual strength. IT industry is one of those major uh, aspects. You look at any of the world's best university and you will find best of Indian brains working there. And this is because of the Indian education system. Now, this education system or this strength of ours is gradually depleting. You will find that number of Indians working in these prestigious institutions, they are gradually declining. The reason or it rather reflects that we are not being abreast with the latest uh, things happening in the world. So if I talk about innovative digital teaching methodology, it is important from both the perspectives. You need to understand who are the stakeholders, students, teachers, management, parents, all are the stakeholders into this uh, process of uh, learning, teaching, imparting knowledge and all that. So we need to understand that digital education is basically the innovative use of uh, digital tools and technologies during teaching and learning. And in fact, we have a term for it. We call it as technology enhanced learning or e-learning. Exploring the use of digital technologies has many advantages. It gives educators the opportunity to design uh, engaging learning opportunities in the courses they teach, and they can take the form of blended or fully online courses and programs. Now, I have used certain terms which I'll be elaborating upon, but before we go ahead, you need to understand that there are three fundamental pillars of teaching. They are content delivery, uh, evaluation or assessment, whatever you call it, and feedback. And if I talk about digital technology, it can be incorporated in all these three domains for effective teaching and learning. And this is the focus of my presentation today. I'm going to talk about what are the digital technologies which we are going to incorporate or which can be incorporated for content delivery, assessment, and feedback or discussion forum. 
So these are the three aspects which I talk about. You need to understand that uh, of late, the form of education has changed. The form of content delivery has changed. Now what we are talking about is an inquiry-based learning system. You, know, you must be inquisitive that what is inquiry-based learning. So it is nothing but an uh, approach to learning that emphasizes the student's role in the learning process. You know, traditional education was one-way communication. The instructor was coming, they were delivering certain content to you, and at a later stage, you were uh, having some questions and likewise. But now we are saying that content delivery cannot be done independently. Student has to be part of it. So inquiry-based learning uh, focuses on that. Let's say the teacher is telling the students what they need to know, and students are encouraged to explore the material, ask questions, and share ideas. So it would be an uh, interactive mode of learning. We have always said that uh, any mode of learning, it becomes good when it is interactive. But you need to give a formal shape to it. You know, uh, we were contradicting ourselves in our traditional approach. We were adopting a uh, instructional based pedagogy. At the same time, we are expecting it to be, uh, let's say, two way communication. So it was against the basic essence of it. And that's why inquiry based learning has become very popular. And uh, it has been explained through uh, five E's. Normally, we say five E's of uh, inquiry based learning. Now, what are these five E's? The first E says, engage the student. You know, if I talk about a traditional class, I am not engaging my student because what I do is, uh, I come to the class, I start delivering, uh, depending upon the topic which I am comfortable in, uh, or if I feel that this is best for the student, so all is depending upon the instructor's judgment. Now, what we want to do is, we want to engage the student. In this phase, uh, it focuses on mentally engaging students by capturing their interest and giving them an opportunity to demonstrate their prior knowledge. Or uh, rather, instead of knowledge, I will say their understanding or their perception. You know, uh, knowledge is easy to give, but perception is hard to break. So as an instructor, I need to understand first that what is the knowledge level, what is the understanding of my pupil, and what is that perception? And then and then only I'll be able to do justice to my uh, presentation or content delivery. Second E is explore. Again, as the word itself uh, emphasizes, uh, it focuses on facilitative activities that gives the student the opportunity to explore the concept, the skills, and it allows them to engage with the problem. Uh, you know, you need to uh, visualize it. Let's simply say I am teaching trigonometry. So let them explore that what are the practical implications of it. So instead of me going to the class and simply saying this is the formula, these are the angles, and this is how you derive this uh, solution to this problem. Rather than I take them to a, uh, a practical situation, I say that I want to throw the ball to the maximum possible distance. What should be the angle? What should be the velocity? Uh, and what is the relationship? So I'm practically associating, let them visualize, let them explore that how they can connect this concept to real world situation. So we need to explore the situations which demands and this. Items. Beverages and bakery items. Uh, okay, I think somebody. Uh, okay, I'll continue. I'll continue. Uh, third is explain. Uh, as we have said, you have engaged the pupil, you have made them uh, visualize the situation, what they are trying to uh, associate with. Now you explain the concept. So now the perception is easy to break, uh, concept is easily comprehended by the student, and they can relate it. You know, we have done th three things now. We have opened the uh, receptiveness of the student by engaging them. Number one, so now student is ready to learn. Number two, explore. We have given a background to the student. So the student knows that whatever he or she is going to learn, where he or she is going, uh, only the queries will come in and people will try to uh, ask questions. So, you know, now you are creating an ecosystem which is actually creating inclusiveness and uh, two-way communication. 
so now once the student works onto it they have lot many queries in mind and that's why the learning becomes more engaging and once you have implemented this four e's then comes the last e that is evaluate again uh, this evaluation might not be traditional one it could be demonstration based it could be a case study based it could be anything but only thing is uh, don't judge all the students on a common parameter give them the liberty to express themselves in the best way possible so that uh, you do justice to a student's talent or their comprehension so this is the concept of uh, five e in inquiry based learning so uh, this was especially meant for my teacher friends my colleagues who are out there we need to look upon our pedagogy from a different perspective instead of the traditional approach this is the 5e approach that we need to work upon from the students perspective you need to be since you are one of the stakeholder you need to be ready for all these things you cannot come to a class completely raw and expect a, a capsule of knowledge to be given to you no that's not going to happen now you have to do your homework first and this concept has led to different styles of learning one of the most popular start uh, styles of teaching learning is uh, which we are using these days is flipped learning or blended learning these are two terms which are many a times used interchangeably uh, maybe when i discuss more and elaborate more about it you will realize that in some form or the other you also are doing it flipped learning or uh, blended learning these approaches use multiple methods to deliver learning by combining face to face interaction with online activities so what's happening is uh, now you might be inquisitive that uh, what is it happening i'll add more to it uh, another term comes with it that is flipped learning which is a pedagogical approach in which the conventional notion of classroom based learning is inverted so what happens is the students are introduced to the learning material before the class and when the classroom begins they have already done their homework onto it they have had uh, the discussion within the group they have seen certain videos they have solved a few problems and now they are ready with all their questions pertaining to their understanding and this would be cleared in the class this is where we have to uh, change our way of learning now and this is where students you need to change your way of learning now if you are coming to a class how it will be implemented or how we implement it i'll tell you how we do it in our university what we have done is we have created a small uh, group for the student now it's a, uh, on our portal we have class wise we have created a group so prior to every class the teacher puts in certain things those things could be a few minutes youtube video uh a couple of of notes maybe a few paragraphs not more than that uh a small exercise and maybe uh some links that if you want to explore further these are all relevant links because you need to keep the student very focused your video cannot be more than 4 to 5 minutes if you are giving a student a video which is of 20 minutes rest assured they will not view it they will come to your class without preparing anything so to create the concept of flipped learning or blended learning you need to share beforehand with the students a 5 minutes video at max a few uh, paragraph notes one page or two page at the max a uh, few questions so that once they have read uh, the seen the video read those um, the concepts they are ready to attempt that question that question will be as such that it relates the concept they have studied with practical implementation and finally if that raises inquisitiveness within the student and they want to explore more give them few web links so these are the links wherein they can go and explore more but don't expect them to have uh, explore it's additional you know uh, in any class there are uh, we call it a 10 uh, 80 10 ratio 10 is those students you give them everything they will not study the other 10% are you don't give them anything and they will study everything and other 80% students are there whom you push they move with the crowd so all we are targeting is this 80%
So maybe the uh, top 10% they will explore all your web links, but what we are aiming at our class is this 80%. So we will have this understanding at least that my pupil is coming to my class, having seen that video and having read those. Now, since they have done it, they must be having a lot many doubts in their mind. So once they enter into the class, instead of teaching them the concept, we explain the working, we explain the implementation, we solve their queries. This sort of learning, it becomes very interesting in the sense that classes are not monotonous, uh, students are constantly engaged into it, and above all, they are able to relate the knowledge they are gaining with some real world entity. So this is something that gives a new flavor to the traditional mode of teaching. Now, this was flipped learning. We involve it or we associate or complement it with another type of learning, which we call as collaborative learning. Again, the name itself uh, suggests what is collaborative learning that you're learning in collaboration. But try to understand, it is not the traditional uh, peer learning that within the peer group you are discussing and learning when I talk about the collaborative learning you are talking about uh, a global connect you know what we are doing right now is a collaborative learning I am from a different institute from a different background and I am interacting with a group which is from maybe altogether different background but we are sharing experiences and maybe over a period of time we'll start working together Maybe uh, I will implement my pedagogical style into your institution. So maybe I'll, uh, there would be one common class wherein my students and your students, they are connecting online on a common platform. Like a normal class, we say it's a class of 40, so 40 students from your institution, 40 students from my institution coming together. We are discussing the concepts. You share your experience. My students share their experience. I act as a moderator. This is the collaborative learning. Uh, let me tell you how I have implemented it at my institution. I'm from computer science background. So I'll talk a bit in context of com computer science, but I think even people from other background, arts or commerce, or maybe from bio or other background, they'll be able to relate to it. The concept was that we were trying to develop an evaluative system for the students. We thought that uh, let's design a software through which we can evaluate the students from multiple perspectives. I said no, that evaluation, that shouldn't, shouldn't be a common yardstick for everybody. So we wanted an evaluation system wherein, depending upon the student's comfort level, they could opt for one type of evaluation. So in system development, whenever you're developing a software, there are a few phases. If I talk about very fundamental phases, they are analysis, design, and development. There are a few more, but I'm keeping it short. Analysis, design, <coughs> coding, and development. So what we did was we created three teams. The analysis part was done by students from my institution. The design part was done by students from University of Nebraska, USA. And coding was done by students from Wisconsin's University, USA. Again. So now we had three different groups of students coming from three different parts of the world and working on a common problem. So how it went was that we created a common platform. Then the time zones were a challenge. Language was a challenge. The mode of instruction was a challenge uh, because pedagogical implementations are different in all the institutions. The way we were teaching was different uh, in our institution uh, as compared to there. So we brought everything together. And this diversity was actually the essence of this learning. So now understand that how uh, three different units from very different background coming together, solving a common problem. This gives you a global perspective to your learning. And that's why I suggest that collaborative learning, if a uh, club with flipped or blended learning, can give you phenomenal results. You know, this exposure that you get at this moment, this exposure was something which was missing all these years into our education system. And this pandemic, has given us uh, like this silver lining to this dark cloud that now we are looking outwards. We are talking about a global perspective. Maybe two years um, earlier, we might not even have thought that I'll be interacting with you in this manner. We are doing it now. So if you can connect with me in this mode, why not from anybody in uh, US, UK, Europe, Russia, anywhere in the world, and for that matter, even China.
this is the way or this is the collaborative learning i believe we should all look upon i am talking to both teachers as well as the students there are so many student groups out there don't wait for your teachers students i am addressing to you don't wait for your teachers to come up with this idea go out there discuss with people discuss with different student groups and you can have your own uh, platforms for doing this there are tools also i want you to uh, remember few terms uh, there are certain tools from uh, softstyle technologies there are uh, trello boards these are all applications these applications are actually meant for this sort of a collaborative learning uh, i'll try to write it in the chat box so that uh, you uh, see all these uh, names or you you don't have to take notes for it so uh, i'll just write down these basic names here uh, one is solstice technology why i'm writing this is that you it will give you an opportunity to go and explore on uh net so you will see more about it uh we have got so these are just the two uh, things i have mentioned but uh, they are not all you have lot many um, such uh, tools out there so they help you in collaborative learning so what happens is it gives you a dashboard it gives you your own card so whatever are your observations you pin it there you know in collaborative learning you have a huge board pin board so everybody comes there they have a specific section that put their ideas then you draw threads club together the solution and all that uh, so this is the sort of environment this these tools give you and these are not the only two tools they are just illustrative uh, there are lot many such tools available and you know uh, once this we are out of this pandemic phase let me tell you even the form of our classrooms will change we will no longer have that uh, face to face sort of a setup in our classrooms it could be more of a informal it should be like a restaurant like layout wherein you have small groups of tables or chairs then uh, a group of people can sit together and, and discuss or uh, you could have a round circle sort of a thing so everybody is sitting in a circle your um, teachers role would be more of a moderator so they are uh, sitting at one place everybody around them they are discussing so we need to change we need to think out the box that uh, it is not a rule of thumb that class should be in the manner that everybody should be facing the students you know the basic concept is wrong that both are having a different perspective a student is having a different perspective teacher is having a different perspective and then we are seeing common learning isn't it so let's get over it we all should sit in a circle and discuss as a peer group this is the form of uh, uh, learning as we need to change or uh, content delivery that we need to learn. this is the classroom environment which we need to change so uh, these are few concepts about your collaborative learning and flipped learning so these are very uh, popular terms which are being used these days and to facilitate uh, them one of the very important tools that we have these days are your uh, learning management systems lms uh, you must have heard about google classroom uh, moodle for that matter is one of the excellent uh, lms but again uh, learning is a bit typical uh, if you work with moodle uh, i'll write the name here uh, moodle is uh, definitely Uh, a very comprehensive tool implementing lot many features and everything but the learning curve is bit steep especially for the teachers for the students it's not difficult but for teachers you need to practice it first google classroom is much simpler as compared to moodle so these are the lms but even the concept of lms is changing now what is happening is that lms you are offering the content in a common form to everybody now we are talking about a system wherein the content is offered in a different manner to every student i'll tell you one thing uh, recently ministry of uh, uh, human resource mhrd uh, they have given us a project to my university and the principal investigator into that we are working on a dynamic lms which works on contingency theory of e learning contingency theory says that uh, of e learning says that there is no perfect fit for everybody but yes there is an optimal fit 
so if i say that one shoe fits all that is not true for different users you have different solutions so we need an lms which actually assesses a student and tries to identify that what are his strengths and how he learns better understands better and so the content will be delivered in a different manner how we do it what we have done so far is that we have created a small test of 3 minutes in this test student gets to read a paragraph answer few questions they get to see a video and answer few questions they solve a problem they answer few questions they read a real world situation a case study and they answer few questions a uh, fifth part is uh, they listen to an audio and they answer to our few questions based on it we have created a tool which assesses the uh, mechanism through which the student learns the best and then it suggests to us that how we should teach that student there would be some students who understand best by uh, learning and doing by doing and learning there are other students who comprehend best when they see a video there are other students who were very good at listening once they uh, heard something they were able to answer it correctly and there were other few who were uh, very comfortable reading and then answering so based on that we created a mix and now the same class was delivered to 10 different students in 10 different ways this is the dynamic lms we are talking about so this is the food for thought for all the teachers that you need to understand this thing that all your teachers uh, all your students they come from a different background you need to design your content in such a manner that everybody can comprehend out of it so this is the concept of uh, dynamic learning management systems that is emerging uh, these days one of the very important thing which many of the educational institutions in india they are missing is the moocs the massive online open content this content is there for everybody to uh, learn assess uh, read deliver but it's not being optimally utilized the reason is that maybe lack of awareness we have like uh, uh, india's own swayam portal if you look at it swayam prabha swayam jyoti swayam these are so many different portals which are there swayam is offering you all the you name a area and you will find a course on swayam nptel for that matter all your technical courses are there but you know the problem is that the uh, since it is not part of formal education in most of the institutions it is not being taken up seriously what's happening is uh, in my university what we have done is or in my course uh, i have mca bc and msc it students with me so what we have done is we have designed our curriculum in such a manner it's a choice based credit system so we give a, a liberty to a student they can supplement their four credits with some mooc course which is being offered online on swayam so now what happens is student has the choice to opt for a course let's say somebody wants to go on uh, uh, bioinformatics or let's say they are working upon uh, they want to work upon gene mapping again you need computer experts into that with some background knowledge of uh, biology or uh, genetics or something so now what's happening is since i don't have the expert teachers to teach them genetics and thing biotechnology bi bioinformatics so they take a course on swayam so once they clear that course and give us the certificate i'll give them four credits in that paper, in that course so this is how uh, this is again uh, if you are affiliated to a university definitely it will come from the university but this proposal can always be given to them mhrd has already uh, advocated it it's there in writing ugc has written to all the universities that they can uh, club the swayam courses with their uh, own curriculum so moocs are something which you need to look up very seriously students uh, let me tell you it's a golden opportunity for you diversify your skill set the more diverse the skill set you have more would be your receptiveness in the market there are so many technologies coming in you need to incorporate that uh, we are talking about smart classrooms uh, again uh, in physical form establishing a smart classroom was very difficult but if i talk about uh the current day scenario i think uh, uh, it becomes very easy because in an online mode there are so many tools and technologies that are available to you how to do that uh, i'll give you a small uh, i'll try to show you a small demo sort of a thing 
that uh, how we can do it uh, i think my presentation is blocked so i won't be able to give it actually what i wanted to explain to you was the concept of uh, augmented data sir you can you can click on presentation and you can share your screen Uh, sir my present now is disabled i i wanted to do that but my present uh, it says the screen sharing has been turned off so, so maybe while the setting up the class uh, i just can i can you share can you share the as you can see what uh, I, i was trying to uh, okay. tell here and says here sure. there is the concept of uh, augmented reality augmented reality has been uh taken up uh, very casually in the form that you go on to google search something and therein you have the augmented reality tool embedded uh, has anybody used that tool augmented reality in google among the audience anybody has used it no sir no sir okay uh, i'll tell you a simple thing uh go to google and type tiger Of, from your mobile, not from your laptop, from your mobile. Go to Google, type "tiger." The results that you get in, you will see that uh, it will have something called "view in 3D." So the moment you click on that "view in 3D," you will realize that uh, a tiger will appear on your window. I'm trying to demonstrate. Give me a second, please. Like I have searched it. I searched tiger, and this is what I got. If you search tiger on your mobile, uh, you will get this sort of a tiger appearing there. Okay, it's in three dimensional. So all you do is you click on view in 3D. The moment I do that view in 3D, this tiger will appear on my screen, and then whenever I shoot around, that tiger would be part of it. so uh, you will get an impression as if uh, you are roaming around that tiger i'll give you a demo uh, on it just give me a second i'll show you i think it would be pretty interesting to see uh, these are very simple technologies uh, but they bring so much variety to your teaching uh, that uh, teaching becomes fun actually so that is the core idea actually implementing some uh, fun component into uh, learning and along with fun the comprehension becomes uh, very high now let me show you what we did so this is the tiger which i shot and this is my department so it's the lobby of my department somebody simply walks in and it gives you an impression that it's something live so it's just a tiger you can have dolphins and all that and these are the not the only things uh, we have so many different uh, aspects into it uh, like so this is a tiger in my living room you actually feel as if you are uh, in front of the tiger it is so clear it is so realistic that you feel as if you are standing face to face with the tiger and you are implementing your real background with it so what's happening is you have a 3d object and you film everything around you so now it's not only restricted to tigers if i talk about normal google uh google has given no, i'll i'll just read out i i had searched them so what images available right now they are land animals underwater and wetland animals birds house pets human anatomical system especially people from uh, bio background cellular structures chemistry terms biology terms physics terms cultural heritage sites cultural objects all these are already been implemented in uh 3d like uh monocotyledons dicotyledons eucryocyte chromosome structures red blood cells uh basophile eosinophile all these things have been implemented in 3d now just imagine you are creating a class wherein uh i come in and show it to you in the form that uh 
ये दिस स्पेसिफिक स्ट्रक्चर इज देयर एट द सेंटर ऑफ द रूम एंड आई एम मूविंग अराउंड टेलिंग द स्टूडेंट ओके यू लुक एट दिस बॉन्ड दिस इज दिस फॉलोइंग बॉन्ड दीज आर द टू केमिकल्स कमिंग इन दिस इज हाउ स्ट्रक्चर्स आर इंटरलिंक सो आई कैन मूव अराउंड दिस 3D स्ट्रक्चर एंड एक्सप्लेन टू माय स्टूडेंट्स दैट हाउ दैट स्ट्रक्चर वर्क्स सो जस्ट इमेजिन द लेवल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग और द विजुअलाइजेशन यू विल हैव विद दिस टेक्नोलॉजी so from the teachers perspective it's a small exercise uh, search on google uh, shoot something around it and show it down to the uh, projector or on your screen and when you are interacting with the class uh, you can explain the concepts to them very easily now this is something which is already there into uh, google the simplest form those who can explore a bit more there are tools which are available you can create your own such tools like i'll give you an example uh, there are application like um, uh, wikitude is an application so what happens is uh, i can prepare a explanation i can have some images and things like that all club together and when any of my student takes their mobile and highlights it lights on your textbook suppose i'm on uh, teaching the uh, dna structure to my students so what i will do is i will create a virtual reality uh, video using any of these tools and i'll ask my students that go in this application and scan the uh, dna structure on page number 250 of your textbook the moment they go and scan that uh, uh, image suddenly uh, your entire presentation comes up wherein you can give the 3d effect the text comes in audio comes in arrows comes in and it becomes so interactive that you cannot imagine i am giving you some exercises uh, please explore these tools uh, wiki cute is one such thing uh, you know the moment you have term uh, wiki coming in so your confidence level increases a bit and that yes it has to be uh, good we have other tools like uh, unity is there uh, you can jot these terms uh, unity is there uh, er core unity ar core these are certain uh, very uh, uh, useful tools uh, free to use uh, like what i am telling you these are all free web i am not talking about any entity for which you need to invest anything these are all free to use tools and you know uh, from the management or um, college perspective we need to understand the way we have been investing into let's say infrastructure in air conditioners computer systems your uh, for that matter ro systems or uh, table and benches or something like that that ways you need to start spending on online tools also if you look at the balance sheet or the budget of any of the institutions there are very few who talk explicitly about these uh, it tools for pedagogy because it's not part of the culture so this is the culture we need to build in at least your annual budget give 2 or 3% to such tools uh, because your air conditions are important your computer machines are important your internet connection is important your library books are important furniture is important your notice boards are important your gardens are important your parking is important but equally important are these it tools which are to be embedded into your teaching so why can't i have my institution spending 80 90000 for procuring one of these tools so that the teachers can develop their own classes why can't the institution be investing a bit on some tutorials on working on these things why can't uh, the institutions hire the technicians or technical people for digitization of the content or training the teachers for digitization of the content this is the new normal we are talking about this is wherein we need to change our way of uh content delivery so this is uh what i meant by smart classroom that it's uh, normally people consider that smart classroom is like uh, a classroom with a projector or a, a touch screen board with speakers and project no i am not talking about that sort of smart classroom i am talking about smart classroom online wherein i can uh, blend all these different tools and technologies to deliver a session which is very interactive which has the graphics into it which has 3d animation into it and trust me all this can be done with very little efforts whatever efforts i put into preparing for my class 
I put in 10% more effort. The way you prepare your PowerPoint slides, it's as simple as that. Only thing is it requires certain practice. And students, it's for you to also show your metal. Given an assignment, your teacher has given you an assignment. Why don't you incorporate these tools and technologies into preparing your assignment? Include all these tools like Wikitude, Unity, AR Core, Virtual Reality. You must be playing VR Chat in the wonderful uh, playing platform. Why don't you create some lessons out of it? Why can't you create a case study out of it? Why can't we use that animation for representing some academic content? Try all these things and make a habit of using these digital tools because you know it uh, your confidence level will improve with your habit of using it if you use it once in a while you will always be apprehensive whether this technology will work or not you know uh, during, after the first lockdown like being into the computer science department i'm serving the entire university for online or i'm facilitating the university for online content delivery we did our first webinar uh, I think in first week of April, and I was so apprehensive that what will happen in that webinar, like whether things will work or not, whether the system will collapse or not. And at the time, the most convenient tool was Zoom. So I was using Zoom for that. I was so apprehensive, but when I used it twice, I became so confident. And as of now, today, you tell me at any moment, at any sort of a event to be done online, I'm ready with it because we have grown we have learned through experience we have done so many webinars now that we have confidence that what problem can come in and how to resolve so this is the confidence which you need to imbibe into yourself and that will come through your practice so this is i'll urge upon all the students and teachers please try to use some of these tools that will give you a lot of confidence so this was one pillar which i focus mostly upon because it is one of the most important pillars of learning that is content delivery the second important pillar is your assessment. How do we do it? As I mentioned that if you're evaluating somebody, we can no longer go for a traditional mode of evaluation that you have got eight marks out of 10. Your evaluation has to be uh, more analytically now, more analytical now. It should be supported with analytics. So if I say that the score of my student is uh, eight out of 10, I will have a diagram with it that says that my student was comfortable or he scored 20% mark in fundamental questions. He scored 15% uh, marks from the direct book questions. He scored 10% in the applied questions. So that shows that my student has got an understanding of the concept. Uh, uh, the definition, but he's missing the understanding of implementing into real world situation. So my assessment, my evaluation has to be supported with this type of analytics. Now you must be wondering how to do that. The idea is pretty simple. Whatever questions you are designing, frame your questions in such a manner that they cover all these concepts. Uh, the uh, definition part of it, the fundamental concepts, the applied concepts, uh, the more advanced concept, which in, uh, implement correlation between multiple concepts. So this is how you group your questions. And once the student evaluation comes in, represent it in the form of student performance in each of this. Now, how to do it? Uh, there are a lot many tools available, which will uh, give you a dashboard. Even students will have their own dashboard. And when you evaluate them, uh, it would be through a tool. So student dashboard will give him a complete picture that how you performed. Uh, it will compare it with the previous assessment also. Uh, I'll name a few for my teacher friends. I'll name uh, a few such tools. One is uh, Duga, D-U-G-G-A. Uh, I'll write it down. It's a wonderful tool. It is uh, uh, supported by Microsoft also, and it is becoming very popular. Uh, it has got inherent capabilities wherein you can design different types of tests. Uh, you can uh, have MCQs, descriptive questions. You can have pictures inserted into it. Uh, you can automate it. You can give authorization into it. A lot many. And it's very simple. Drag and drop sort of a thing. So learning curve is very flat here. You'll learn it very easily. So Juga is one tool, which I'll want that you all should try. Other tool, it's slightly complicated, 
but uh, i think you must try it once you get a hold on to it you will be able to design your own test it is known as test project requires some level of computer knowledge but again it's a preliminary fundamental knowledge nothing rocket science into it so if you want your test to be very analytical you know uh, to test project you can record the screen you can monitor the screen of your student you can monitor the web page uh, they are working upon so you know uh, our tests are proctored so uh, what i mean to say is if you want to create a proctored evaluation go on test project with little bit of tweaking you'll be able to create your own assessments which will uh, let you create this sort, uh, type of test so duga is uh, um, maggi type ready to serve put in hot water and it's cooked so just drag and drop and your test is ready uh, test project it's like um, uh, making chow you'll have to put in few ingredients have some expertise but the outcome would be very delicious so uh this is what i can promise you on to these tools that uh when it comes to evaluation part please try to incorporate these type of tools so your evaluation will be more uh, balanced justified objective you know uh a student should know where he or she lacks unless and until they know their weak points they will not be able to grow on that that's why i'm emphasizing that our mode of evaluation needs to change so please try to use again let me tell you whatever things i am mentioning these are just for illustration purpose that similar to n number of similar tools are available but i am naming a few because i don't want you to bombard with so many things that you end up with not experimenting with anything so i am giving few small things so that you can work on to them and uh, you can actually derive some outcome out of i, I don't want that Uh, my session should be uh, simple yeah you heard it and you lost it so it should not be like that that's why i'm giving you so much food for thought so you take it um, with you something all after the class also so this was about the assessment uh, the last part which uh, people normally tend to miss or the fourth part that is the feedback now how you do that how this uh, feedback comes to you there are various methods for it feedback could be in the form of uh, the family sitting together and discussing which we call as discussion forum in our uh, online terminology so what i will say is if you are talking about uh, a system wherein you have evaluated you have taught the students you have evaluated them try to find out what they liked about it and what they did not like because eventually you need to listen to them you need to hear from that and that what they liked and what they will want to hear more in it so this will best be done if you have some discussion forums with you there are lot many platforms uh, you know feedback can be of different types feedback is oral feedback wherein students are discussing uh, face to face and saying that this is i like this is something which i don't like feedback would be in the form of a questionnaire so then uh, it could be anonymous questionnaire so that uh, students write something about it or it could be something like uh, uh, a test maybe a small test which you have created and uh, you ask them uh, to comment on it or maybe uh, you judge their perception out of it so there are different methods so when i talk about feedback there are lot many tools available for uh, taking the feedback also uh, one is padlet Uh, i'll write it down again it's a, a free online discussion forum uh, padlet is uh, very popular because it's very easy to use uh, we have many more uh, we have uh, socrative now comment uh, i'll just write it down uh, we have socrative socrative is uh, again popular uh for that matter now comment so these are the few discussion forums uh, which you can always use this discussion forum could be uh, for a group it can uh, enable your uh, one to one interaction also it can also let you uh, discuss in a group 
it could be a peer group a group of students uh, working on a common project having a session here so these are the different tools which you can be using for uh, carrying out discussion among your group so uh, they, these were the three main pillars content delivery uh, evaluation and feedback the so i have tried to cover uh, the it technologies which are associated with all these three pillars i have talked about the pedagogical styles and these are the few things which uh, i thought i'll sh share with you so um, i think i have consumed my share of time so sir had given me one hour so uh, i have consumed my one hour uh, so uh, thank you for being such a wonderful audience and i am open for your queries but uh, you need to promise me that whatever things i have mentioned please introspect onto it please try to contribute somewhere or uh, join into this new concept of learning so this is what i'll expect from you all uh, thank you over to you sir thank you sir uh, that was really thought provoking you gave us so on uh, the digital learning technology methodology uh, though uh, the powerpoint could not be shared you were consistent in presenting the thoughts and ideas so uh, big thanks for you on that uh, let me start the discussion uh, with my own questions sir so uh, two, i have two questions to be asked one is uh, related to the flipped class as you were mentioning so this uh, flipped class is being planned the framework itself is being planned uh, based on the fact that students would be responding on a 100% scale right uh, like viewing the video uh, going through the lecture notes before coming to the class but uh, on the real scale real time scale is it actually happening if so uh, how come uh, faculty uh, manage like uh, out of a uh, class having 40 students uh, nearly five or six students are responding perfectly but the other students are like uh, they are like uh, you know segregated or not responding to the uh, faculty in per se like uh, view, viewing the video or doing the activities in such cases how to orient them and how to bring them together uh, sir in fact uh, you have answered your question yourself because you said that out of the class of 45 or 6 are putting in the efforts. So these are the uh, opinion leaders for your class. Now how the class starts? These are the 5 students who have done their homework. Now your class starts with their experience. So I know the remaining 35 they have not done their homework and all that. But when you listen to okay. the experiences of these 5 students, they are learning. So rest assured, sir, in a class of 40, you will not, not have all 40 coming prepared every day. But trust me, you will always yeah. find five or six students who have done their homework. Most of the time, sure, these could sure. be the five or six common students or um, over a period of time. Be patient with it. Instead of blaming the students, you are useless, you are not doing anything. Tell them, okay, you have taken the easy way out. So you are the bench. In my class, I say that uh, we have three types of people. We have opinion leaders, we have opinion seekers, and third are the bench warmers. So the five or six students who have done their homework, they are the opinion leaders because whatever they are telling to everybody, they will frame an opinion out of it. Earlier, you were the only one who were framing the opinion, isn't it? Because you are the only teacher who are telling something to the students. Yes, sir. At yeah. the time, also, yeah. they were not prepared. So now you have six opinion leader you are one and five are the other students now you have the opinion seekers so this five students are the 10 percent i mentioned 10 percent would be there who will put in all their efforts there are other 80 percent who will be the opinion seekers sir so whatever you all are discussing they will be grasping it and there would be another 10 percent sir you do anything for them they will not gain anything out of they are known as the bench warmers so do one thing, sir. Uh, classify your students that every day who say come there, okay, the opinion leaders for my class today are these five students. So they get the medal that yes, I have my efforts have been recognized. The other five, you need to tell them you are the bench first because you are not listening to anything. You do that in your class consistently for sir, 10 days. Trust me, the class will become highly responsive over a period of time. I, I actually I've been doing it for almost one year now. And uh, I have learned through okay, the. Uh, sure. uh, uh, I have gone through the same phases of frustration and uh, at times that I really wanted to give up. But trust me, my persistence has paid, and as of now, students are doing. Now really they are well. responding. Yeah. 
yes yes yes, yes. yes. and uh, next thing is uh, how to uh, we are we are handling uh, remedial classes now so for uh, slow learning students so the first uh, before the start of the class in case of uh, flipped class we will be classifying the students based on their uh, pre assessment uh, tests and all so for after identifying a slow learning group of students in the remedial sections uh, what what are all the things we could uh, positively utilize rather than providing the repeated lectures or simplified notes is there any other methodology where, which we can follow to uh, make them more easily understand the concept much more easier in a short period of time because uh, in a in a scheduled uh, dates we don't get much time to focus on the remedial classes as well as the slow learners because uh, the, usually the, those sessions would be planned intermittent right after the exams and uh, before the start of the next exam session so we don't get Neither. time to focus on them in that case how to focus on them uh, in a short period of time with an effective Sir, method I'll answer it in terms of two strategies uh, one is a long term and persistent strategy and one is a short term strategy because if we are just uh, in a situation that we have just 15 days left and students are to be promoted next semester and all that in long term strategy the evaluation should be as such as i was mentioning that you need to uh, do some analytics onto the students evaluation where they were lagging were they lagging onto the fundamental concepts were they lagging on the reading part of it that means the definition part or were they lacking on the implementation part so if you realize that they are lacking on the uh, reading part of it the fundamental because the definition you cannot uh, give them a capsule they have to learn through the hard way out so if you have classified that this is uh, where they are lagging you need to give them exercise in the form that this is the uh, definition which you need to learn and comprehend the number two if you believe they are missing onto the concept then that is the stage wherein you need to put in the extra efforts uh, have them into small peer group of four or five and you will have to discuss the concepts with them and thirdly if you feel that they are finding it difficult to implement the concept into practical aspects of it then definitely you will handle it in a manner that you will have to give them the applied uh, case studies based solutions so that they can do it what we do here is sir uh, this is the long term wherein your assessment your evaluation should be as such that this analytics can come out of it once you have this analytics your task will become very easy but it will not happen overnight you will have to uh, redesign your assessment then it will come or a shorter period sir what uh, we were facing the same dilemma how to uh, bring these students into the mainstream so what we did was we created a uh, sathi yojana matlab uh, sathi means the friend so what we did was we created we associated uh, a topper with every student and uh, the topper was given some grades for it so initially we started as volunteers in my class i said that uh, there was a group of uh, seven or eight students who are finding it very difficult to keep themselves abreast with what we were teaching so what we did was we asked for volunteers from my class and we got around uh, 10 11 volunteers who said that sir we will associate ourselves with these students and we will be in touch with them on a constant basis maybe if they had a query or they were not understanding concept maybe at let's say 10 30 at night they were ready to help them out so this sathi yojana or this uh, a uh, friend scheme that really worked wonders for us and uh, multiple ways number 1 the bonding in the class that became very strong number 2 the sense of belongingness among those students for the class and the institution that grew many of us so i think sir this peer learning could be uh, the best solution for it but only thing is students need to be uh, rewarded for that what i did was i exempted my toppers from their internal assessment we have a 10 marks internal assessment so i said your assessment is based on the efforts you are putting onto this weaker student so if a weaker student you can improve his grade from 3 marks to 5 marks or 6 marks uh, in that multiple you will be getting in your internal assessment so that was the confidence or the faith uh, we had in our student and they had in us but uh, we got very good results out of it sir Yes, it's nice to hear. We'll try to implement. So we are doing it, but uh, we try to improvise and uh, try to bring it up to a mark. Uh, participants, if you have any queries to discuss with the guests, you can start asking faculty members or students. Students, you, you too can interact with the guests. Since you are the stakeholders of uh, digital teaching methodology, you can give your uh, inputs and you can ask queries. 
you can even type on your chat box so that it can be looked on by the guest and he can he can discuss and think my email ids are with you sir if there are any specific queries even after the session you can always mail it sure. to me and i'll be more sure, than sir. happy to uh, get that query sir sure sir i think we have given them enough food for thought so they'll take them some time to get it digested uh, but i'm very sure once they start using all these things they'll have a lot many questions to be asked and i'm open to it sir i'll be very uh, happy to help yes yeah, sure Yeah, well, uh, I've uh, received few questions from the YouTube chat box, sir. Uh, okay. I think I can consolidate it and I can share it uh, to your email ID as well as participants in the later course. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I'll sure, be available. Sir. I'll be happy to help, sir. Sure, 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 sir. So uh, that's it for uh, discussion round. Uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Juliana, head department of. Uh, information technology of our institution to deliver the vote of thanks yeah thank you sir go go good morning all i am humbled to thank our chief guest dr avinash panwar who who was kind enough to share his thoughts on innovative digital teaching methodology and make it it is a useful one for each one of us and i also thank each one of you who have participated in this webinar during this pandemic situation and make use of the time well spent thank you sir last but not least i thank the management principal sir ceo sir deans and heads of our institution for their support thank you all thank thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much thank you sir uh, i thank all the participants once again for joining the session uh, the feedback link will be posted shortly on the chat box you can fill the feedback and submit it promptly to receive the certificate the platform will be open for another 5 to 10 minutes for you to fill the session participants who have joined in the youtube live session you can also look out for the chat box for the feedback link kindly fill the feedback form thank you all for joining today's session looking forward to meet you virtually or even part physically in the future events thank you one and all
Okay. 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 Okay.